In 2013, Argidius set out on a journey. A journey to understand how enterprises are best supported to grow and create employment. The aim was to enable business development support, BDS organisations and their funders to improve the effectiveness of support to enterprises by implementing what works. During this time, we have funded a variety of business development support organisations to deliver services such as coaching, consulting, networking and training to thousands of enterprises of varying sizes, ages and types. Using a data-driven approach, we have tracked the performance of enterprises that have accessed support from the 50-plus organisations we fund and undertake internal and external evaluations to understand if, how and why support changes performance. Some organisations have been highly effective at supporting enterprise growth and employment creation, high performers, whereas some haven't, low performers. This picture is repeated across other publicly available datasets and the evidence from a growing number of robust academic studies in this field. So what is it that distinguishes the high performers from the low performers? These datasets, the evidence from the literature and our knowledge and experience, have converged around five key distinguishing features, the topics of this video series. What's more, the old saying, it's not what you do, it's the way you do it, rings true through each of them. Whether you support enterprises or fund those that do, you should think about how these might be applied to your work to scale effective enterprise development. Lesson one, select the right enterprises for success. Common to any business development support program is the need to attract, recruit and select enterprises. Finding the right enterprises for your program can be challenging. Selection done well will find enterprises whom you are best positioned to add value to, setting the stage for success. If selection is like dating, then good selection is like matchmaking for marriage. It is mutual. The search includes qualities you would like to see in a partner, things like compatibility, commitment, attitude, willingness to learn, and a desire to grow and improve. But what about more specific criteria, such as stage of development, growth trajectory, the skills and experience of those who you will be working with? What are the key values and characteristics which are going to be important throughout the life cycle of your partnership? Having a clear profile of the enterprise and the skills and experiences of the people within the enterprise you would like to be supporting will allow you to focus your efforts into finding and building a quality pool of high potential prospects. But remember, the enterprise is selecting you as much as you are selecting them. Therefore, being clear about what you have to offer and setting realistic expectations such that enterprises know what to expect will avoid potential frustrations and disappointment. What do you have to offer? What level of interaction will you provide? What will be and won't be included in your assistance? What outcomes do you expect to be achieved? Don't forget that just as friends and family can be great matchmakers, your past and present clients and fellow practitioners in the ecosystem who know you well can be highly effective partners in the recruitment process. We've observed that the highest performers incorporate multi-stage selection. Selection is not a one-off event. High performers assess their partnerships with enterprises. This could mean the enterprise deciding they need more breathing room and therefore wish to continue alone, or that the program realizes that the level of investment in support isn't having the impact originally projected and so they seek to divert future investment elsewhere. Segmentation, where enterprises are a match for the organisation, but also recognised to have different profiles. High performers segment their portfolio and tailor their approach to the different groups. Feedback loops that inform selection criteria going forward can be derived from evaluating which enterprises and people responded best to the support. Lesson two. Charging enterprises for services improves performance. We have found that programs who charge perform better than those offered for free. 
This may seem counterintuitive, but we have found that charging even a nominal fee will improve the quality of your applicant pool, as it will help identify entrepreneurs who see the value of what you are offering. We have observed that programs who previously did not charge have improved performance once switched to a paid mechanism. We have seen this is true whether working with very small or very large enterprises. These programs have reported that the quality of applicant enterprises has improved during selection in relation to ideal criteria. That enterprises are more committed and motivated throughout the duration of the support and that enterprises are more engaged in continuously sharing their problems and working to address them. One such BDS programme that introduced fees as part of a redesign doubled job creation in half the time and increased their return on investment tenfold. Lesson 3. Address problems. We learn best through problem solving. If you were to buy a new car today, would you start reading the instruction manual from cover to cover? For most of us, probably not. Most likely, you would only refer to it when a problem arises. The same can be said at an enterprise. Entrepreneurs, managers and employees learn best as problems and challenges are addressed and overcome throughout their day-to-day -day operations and then the causes of the problem understood such that they don't happen again, not from studying exhaustive curriculums before encountering problems. Business education is important, but it needs to be relevant, engaging and easily applied to the enterprise in question. The most effective business development support includes focus on defining the problem. This means helping an enterprise to identify its challenges now and needs moving forward. Such diagnosis may be both a formal, upfront assessment exercise and unfolding conversation between the provider and all peer enterprises. Trust and relationships need to be developed to enable this process. Facilitate learning between peers who face and have overcome related challenges. In China, there was a study taken with 5,000 SMEs in one city. 50% of the SMEs were asked to visit each other's premises once a month and discuss their business challenges and problems, and the other 50% of SMEs were not. The SMEs which met with each other grew 10% over and above the control group, showing the power of collaboration and learning from peers. Incorporate techniques, space and time for problem solving. The length of support should be long enough for solutions to be implemented, but not too long such that other emerging priorities and problems take precedence. Techniques such as reverse curriculum, where the classroom is used for problem solving rather than theory, and tools focusing on the customer such as Business Model Canvas, Lean Startup and others, rather than outsourced business planning, have proven more effective. Lesson 4. Learning by evaluating enterprise performance creates results. The highest performing business development support programmes collect and evaluate enterprise performance data and, together with feedback, use it to continuously improve their services. The collection of data should be embedded in your delivery. In other words, building it into your value proposition with the entrepreneur or enterprise by helping them assess their own key performance information and not employed as an afterthought. This means sitting down with your entrepreneur, going through their financials and helping them assess their strengths, their challenges, their opportunities and converting them into data points which can be analysed over time. This process should complement the ongoing diagnosis. Trust and relationships need to be developed to enable this process. You want the enterprise to be collecting meaningful data from the outset, and this works best when it is non-extractive and value additive. It's important for the enterprise to easily recognise the benefits of monitoring performance through data, and how this can help them to be more successful. Encouraging good data practices with the enterprises you support will not only help the enterprise grow, but it will allow you to see how you are performing over all of your enterprise engagements and help you to understand how you can improve your own level of service. When combined with qualitative feedback, the strongest BDS providers gain vital insights into how to improve their programs 
including strengthening selection by knowing which stage of business and profile of enterprise participants responds best, and learning what does and does not address the growth challenges enterprises are facing. Argidius is a proponent of BDS providers assessing the impact of their services on their clients' revenues, employment and investment outcomes. We have chosen these three indicators because A, knowing these figures helps the enterprise. If they don't know these figures, they are holding themselves back. And B, these key metrics do not distract from the business by detracting from what is important. There is a risk of measuring too many indicators which are not relevant. Some programmes invest up to 30% of their total programme cost in this area, and others invest in strong monitoring evaluation and learning by integrating across their work. The investment pays off, as these programmes are the highest performers. Lesson 5. Improve your own organisation to better serve enterprises. Much like the enterprises BDS providers seek to help, BDS providers also face similar challenges. Don't forget to address these areas yourself. Your ability as a BDS provider to deliver enterprise services at a continuously improving and consistent quality over time and at increasing scale depends on the extent that you are able to build up the quality and good practices of your own organisation. As a BDS provider, it's important to have functional and qualified governance ideally including involvement of successful entrepreneurs who know what it takes to grow significantly. A clear strategy with a healthy balance between focus and growth, understandable, replicable and adaptable, regardless of industry vertical, size and stage of business. A structure for consistently delivering quality, including the ability to plan well and having an organised, empowered and capable team eager to learn and continuously improve. Having these high-level traits embedded in your strategy will strengthen your delivery and improve the chances of success for you and your participants. At Arcidius, we want our partnerships to help the organisations we work with improve these key dimensions of their organisations. In summary, effective enterprise development is about finding the right enterprises to work with and shaping your program to how entrepreneurs actually learn. Enterprise development is not about imparting what you think entrepreneurs ought to know. Key questions to reflect on are, how do people actually learn? How are you designing your program around this? And how are you continually learning yourself to better serve enterprises? Together with our partners, researchers and those working in this field, we have collectively identified these five distinguishing features to scale effective enterprise development. Tell us what you think on our social media channels or find out more at www.argidius.com.